Yes! Another game in the bag! Quantum Break complete! Suck it, Paul Serene. But now what do I do? I, I should probably do a video review. I've been known to do a couple of those every once in a while, but... I don't know, how much effort do I really want to put into it? I mean, there's the, the game capture, and the editing, and the talking, and the camera filming, and I don't really know what to do. What's up? Who the hell are you? Calm down. It's okay. You're gonna find this very hard to believe, but I am you from the future. It's messed up, right? Me from the future, and I'm just supposed to believe you? <sighs> Time portal aside, I'm obviously you except missing one eye. Come on. Yeah, me from the future. Are you kidding me? Was I always this freaking stupid? Okay, okay. I see how this is gonna go. Fine. I didn't want to have to show you this, but look, I have a bionic arm. Looks like a normal arm to me. You've seen Empire Strikes Back! Would you quit messing around? Look, I can't explain how or why, but the future depends on this review. I'm just here to tell you what to do. Come on! Okay, that is pretty convincing, actually. Hallelujah! The future relies on the quality of my video. We're screwed. Developed by Remedy Games and published by Microsoft, Quantum Break is an action-packed third-person shooter. With a twist. Fitting with Remedy's usual style, this mind-bending game is driven by a meaty, complex story of friendship, betrayal, brotherly love, and, of course, time travel. Story aside, what truly sets this game apart from so many others is the presentation. Remedy's previous game, Alan Wake, introduced a television show-like format, where each chapter was paced and framed like individual episodes. Quantum Break runs with that same format, but with one major change. There's a real freaking TV show attached. Yeah, really! They achieved this by casting screen actors in every major role, using motion capture and cutting-edge technology to bring every digital model to life. So when you play as protagonist Jack Joyce, you're also stepping into the digitized shoes of Sean Ashmore, best known for playing Iceman in the X-Men movies and, uh, what was it? Oh yeah, Jake from Animorphs. Now, first things first. The gameplay won't seem like anything special, feeling like a typical third-person game. However, Jack soon finds himself gifted with extraordinary powers after the typical Marvel Comics lab accident deal. Instead of turning into Lou Ferrigno, though, Jack finds himself given mastery over time itself. Take that, Hiro Nakamura. This ability manifests itself in many ways, giving Jack a kind of spidey sense, speed like the Flash, a shielded cone of silence, and plenty more. This led the game's many firefights to become some of the most fun and hectic encounters I've ever played in the shooter. As Jack becomes more powerful, so too do his enemies ramp up their strategies and tech to take him on. This means lots of variety with enemies, though they perhaps could have been rolled out a little more quickly. Each of your powers can also be upgraded, assuming you find the quantum sources to do so. While the shooting mechanics are near flawless, the same can't be said elsewhere. The game is at its worst when it tries to be a platformer. It isn't always clear which ledges and obstacles can be vaulted or climbed. For example... Seriously, this crate literally has the A button painted on it. A jumps, you'd think you could jump up on the crate. And here, you can see, I tried to jump up there. I thought it would, that's what it wanted me to do. So I tried, and I kept trying. And it wasn't for lack of trying. So eventually I just kind of turned around and wandered off for about 18 minutes until I exhausted all other avenues and then I came back because it was pointing me in that direction and then it turns out you just had to jump there but a little bit off to the side. Seriously? I wasted 18 minutes because of that. That's not to say the platforming is entirely bad. There are some clever ideas there like Jack's ability to use a kind of localized rewind to traverse the area. 
These moments also provide some of the craziest, awe-inspiring eye candy throughout the entire experience. It's just a shame some frustration is part of the package, too. As for the story, I've got no complaints. This is a tale of time travel, so right away you have to accept that not everything will make sense. If you're just going to nitpick this thing to death, seriously, just freaking go away. We don't want you here. The story of Jack and his inventor brother, Will, played by Dominic Monaghan from Lord of the Rings, is well told and entertaining throughout. I especially love their frequent attempts to explain paradoxes to other characters because, I mean, those moments are priceless. Time is an egg, which is now fucked. A time egg, which is, it's fucked. It's like broken. I, I don't know. Littlefinger himself, Aiden Gillen, makes for a very compelling villain, primarily because you easily see why he does the things he does. Meanwhile, Courtney hopes Beth Wilder steals the show. Seriously, guys, she's freaking awesome. Look, I'm sorry, but I'm taking the van. That's for not listening to me back there. Ow. Every chapter also ends with a junction point, where we briefly assume control of villain Paul Serene. Given control of his monarch army, it's up to us to make one of two choices at each junction. The choice not only affects the story of the game, but also alters the TV episodes as well. Speaking of these episodes, they're pretty well done. Although it features a different set of characters and events which eventually tie into the game, the main players do show up occasionally as well. They also have a kind of low-budget sensibility, but that's not really a bad thing. For me, they slipped in seamlessly between gameplay bits and kept me engaged all along. Is that so? Hey, Crocker! Crocker! I really need to take a shit. Oh man, he's got a poop. Oh, wouldn't a good word for you? I will help you climb this ladder. All I'm asking is please let me take a fucking shit. Oh, come on, man, let the man poop. Crocker, 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 Crocker. Hey, hey buddy. Crocker! Crocker! Burke! I don't understand, why isn't he letting the man poop? Oh, man. Thank you. Shut up. Back up slowly. Yeah. Oh, He didn't really have to poop. Another way to interact with the TV show is by finding so-called quantum ripples hidden in-game. Here you'll see me interact with a Riverport Rex's sign. And it poofs elsewhere. Aw oh, man, I can't wait to see what that does. Yeah? I think, cause somebody twisted my arm. What the fuck is that? Kinda looks like a dinosaur wearing a helmet. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. Wh hey, where are we? Are we even allowed to be out here? That's it? I quit! Additionally, a couple of glitches here and there took me out of the experience, but nothing really broke the game entirely. At the most, they were pretty much just minor annoyances. Nitpicks aside, this is undoubtedly another entry in Remedy's long list of excellent games. The story achieved what all good ones do. It left me wanting more. Whether that comes in the form of DLC or a full-fledged sequel, I eagerly await a continuation. I give Quantum Break an 8.5 out of 10. Now, um, can we please get working on Alan Wake 2, guys? Pretty, please? I love you. Okay, I did my best. How was that? I think you actually did it. I can go home now. Hmm, freaking sweet. I just saved the future. You're welcome, America, and the rest of the world. Yep. Guess I'll be seeing you. Wait, 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 before you go, one important question. And answer me honestly. Does everybody in the future dress like that, or is it just... Mm... No, man, this is just my style. I mean, your style. Oh, that's just my crappy style that I choose to wear out in public in the future. Oh no!